Hello and welcome to this PLCMentor.com video on functional specifications. Well, hello and welcome to this video on functional specifications. It's going to be something a little bit different. Normally we focus on programming and programming um, you know, techniques. However, on this, it's, I think we need to take a step back and talk about a very, very important document that really happens before you program, or it should. I've seen sometimes where people do these um, in the, at the end, or sometimes they do it before maybe they upgrade a system. But uh, the functional specification really is a document that, that helps a, uh, the, the engineer or whoever's doing the programming be able to communicate how they see the system running uh, to those that maybe can't look at the program and say, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. So this is, um, this is a kind of a communication document, and, or the other way around also. It you know, allows people that really don't know programming, but they say, hey, we need this to operate just like this, because chances are, you know, a programmer, I mean, whoever's doing the programming and the design of the control system, may not completely understand the whole process when they start the project. So this, um, this kind of document allows the two different disciplines to communicate. All right, so what we have here is a typical functional specification document for our company, Automation Technologies. And I guess let's let's talk about the structure first. I mean, this is just a title page, so obviously it's not not a whole lot to see here. But um, it you know does it kind of explain what the document's about, and then you have some other sign-off pages and and um, then a table of contents. So the table of contents can kind of give us a little bit of uh, chance to kind of um, explain the organization of the document, what we expect to see in our documents, and maybe we can talk about what what kind of things uh, at least a basic functional specification has. I mean, all functional specifications don't have to be this massive document that um, uh, that. that you know, as we see right here, this could be a fairly large document, even though it's kind of a sample generic document. So, what we want to see is, is you uh, introduction area, and we we like to put information about the hardware, about the panels that are being put in, uh, about some of the e-stops and locations, and and different items on a project. Um, not necessarily something you have to have to explain how you want a program to work. So, this is just something we do. This doesn't necessarily have to be in every system. Um, also, now what what is important is the uh, design specifications because what you get into there is is some of the standards of how the system's going to be going. You know, some people, uh, you know, green means run for a motor and uh, red means stop. They they might have that as their standards. And other people, when you go into some industries, they'll laugh at you and say, no, red means running because that's a dangerous situation. Green means it's safe, so that's stop. So this explains to everyone how this is going to work, how, how, things, how things fit together. Um, and same thing with the SCADA overview, that, that actually does some of, the, um, some of the standards as far as the SCADA system and how it's put together. Yeah, that's really more what I'm talking about as far as the different colors. But then there's also standards in other areas of the, of the system also. And we go into, we like to list our alarms, the different alarms that are available and, and what's what kind of alarms to expect. Um, and then we get into the meat of the system, which is really, in my opinion, this is this is your bare minimum. Now, well, your bare minimum can be a list. This is how I want the system to run. And, and as long as everybody can kind of come together, it may be a really small system. It may be just something to uh, start a pump and stop a pump. But it would be nice to have a document that kind of explains how that's put together. Just something simple. Hey, it's going to start when the guy pushes the push button. It's going to stop when he presses the stop push button. I mean, it may be that long. But this is a little bit more complex system, or the model of this samples around a more complex system. So what we want to get into, and what we try to do, is we try to break our, our system up into areas. So this one has a reactor, and um, we talk about equipment, since we have, and usually that's motors and, and, and agitators and such. And then we talk about valve operations. Um, 
and if we keep on coming down you can see we've got this for all the different areas we've got you know different areas we've got the tank farm op valve operations and, and uh, bulk storage equipment and valve operations so this is kind of the bulk of each little piece of equipment and, and an ex explanation of how each one of those pieces of equipment will run and then we get into after that we get into automatic sequences and how the sequences relate and work with those individual pieces of equipment so that is kind of an overview of what we expect in our functional specification as a as a minimum for a for a reasonable size system all right so let's let's look at uh, some of the sections that we have in here and, and kind of what's in here so we see you can see we have several sections subsections within our uh, our description of this particular pump right here we have how it initiates what what gets it started uh, what the permissives are okay these are the things that are required to be uh, to be okay before our uh, our pump can run and then how it's going to operate and then termination what stops this okay what are the things that stop this so in this you can see yeah it's a lot of information this this could be a, a bear to put together something like this but this allows everybody to go into this and understand exactly how this particular piece of equipment is going to work in addition in addition to that later on when people are wondering hey why isn't this pump starting they've got this document they can go to and say whoa look look at this you know this uh, permissive this has to be made or or this terminates it so this is what happened here so this can make a good training document to help the operators and help the guys that are going to run the system and gals to run the system <laughs> um, and and kind of describe to them how things are supposed to work same thing with the same thing with the valves we got some on off valves right here tells how they what initiate what's what makes them open or close depending upon how they fail uh, what um, and actually that that's one of the things that's in here usually we do say whether it's fail closed or fail open if it's if it's a valve like that or but it's fail last and then permissives operation termination so it's all pretty much the same whether you're uh, dealing with you know valves or motors or you know different pieces of equipment and then you might have to be a little bit more flexible if you got something that's a little unusual maybe outside that whole that whole realm of of the way things normally operate you just have to kind of adjust to the system you've got so this is kind of a good quick um, you know this is what this is what you can do for different pieces of equipment and um, this is what I think it was a necessary item to help explain how certain pieces in the equipment in the system are going to run okay finally let's look at the sequencing in the uh, functional specification now we've gone and each individual component of the valves the pumps and, and such all have information concerning them we've talked about that but now let's talk about how are those components used so this is a very simple sequence it's a charging reactor with with water okay so there's only one valve used and there you can see there's a section on the equipment and valves that are required if there's a pump required now this happens to be something that there's no pump for so it's just a valve that opens and then the permissives for the sequence this is different than the sequence uh, you know the permissives for this particular valve okay so the and that that would be this required equipment ready that we've got in here that would explain what that means this pr this valve actually has to have its permissives met before this sequence can actually start up so and then they then you go through the, the operation of the sequence you check uh, the system and you open the valve uh, and you re charge required set point close the valve check the tolerance and uh, then continue charging because you can go back here and continue charging if you're under tolerance and alarm if you're over tolerance so that's that's pretty much a simple sequence and um, you know to explain you can tell how it tells okay it might pause if so certain things happen here and then what terminates it what makes it stop so there are the uh, different conditions that make up this simple sequence and it's fairly easy to go and understand how this how this particular uh, water charging sequence is going to take place in our system all right so in summary let's talk about the functional specification what we've learned we've learned the functional specification is in essence a document that explains how your system is going to run how it's going to be put together and you can take that you can expand it to control or to well, not to control but to uh, include 
uh, you know, your items, your, your panels, and your different items that are around the system. But primarily, what we're really interested in is, is something, a document that will allow us as controls professionals to be able to discuss how the system's going to run with people that may not be controls professionals. They may be the guys that, um, you know, that are, that are the chemical engineers or, or people who have their, their specialty and expertise in another area. And it's very important that they get their feedback in this document. So this is a document that's going to be a meeting place between the different disciplines and have everybody understand how the system's going to run. It can also be a document that helps the operators and, and tells the operators how their system's going to work and, and they can use it as a, as a go-to document for training or for understanding what's going on with the system. So we also talk about the different things that might be in a system. One of the primary things I like to see is, is equipment, an explanation of how the equipment is going to run valves, motors, pumps, whatever, and also an explanation of how sequences are going to run, the automatic sequences. So if you've got a, a system that's going to be completely manual, just open and close valves and start and stop pumps, then the equipment section may be good for you. But if you're going to have automatic sequencing, automatic filling to set points and such like that, then you need a sequence section that will explain how the sequences run and how they interface with the different pieces of equipment. That pretty much summarizes what the functional specification is. Don't leave it out of your system. It gets left out often, and generally it causes problems because it, it causes time on the back end when people want to know why the system doesn't work the way they expected it to. So, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned something. This has been Russell White with Automation Technologies for the PLC Mentor.